Our next speaker, though, is, uh, brings together the academic view as well as the practice view as well as the view uh, of creativity. Uh, Dr. Shariki uh, uh, Kumanika, uh, Vice Chair of the Secretary's Advisory Committee on National Health Promotion and Disease Prevention Objectives for 2020. She's the Associate Dean for Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and was the founding director of Penn's Masters in Public Health program. She's involved in numerous national and international public health related activities. She's chaired the U.S. National Nutrition Monitoring Advisory Committee, served on two U.S. Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committees and on the Public Health Service Commission on Dietary Supplement Labels and consulted for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Whew, that's a lot. Please welcome. Uh, Shariki. Good morning. Uh, this is a wonderful day in public health and I am delighted to be a part of it. Uh, I'm going to return to this topic of social determinants that uh, Dr. Coe mentioned and that you've heard about from uh, from Dr. Fielding as well. Uh, if I could have the first slide, I'm going to show you the uh, four objectives that Dr. Coe talked about and focus on this third objective uh, to create social and physical environments that promote good health for all. We believe that this is one of the most important developments of the Healthy People 2020 program. It reflects our uh, intention to emphasize a broad view of the determinants of health, so not only genes and behavior, but also the social, physical, and economic environments. And there are going to be three elements of healthy people to help explain this and, and uh, foster implementation. The first is, is a video about the social determinants of health in plain language, and that's gonna be available on the website that's launched today. And then there is a specific topic area on social determinants, which will be uh, described in a narrative that will be on the website in a, within the next few weeks. And by the spring of 2011, there will be specific objectives that are designed to help um, to implement the social determinants objective. Next slide. Why is this so important to advancing the health of the population. Um, it goes back to the fundamental public health principle that in order to achieve health, we need to assure the conditions in which people can be healthy. And many of these conditions are in the social environment. So we're talking about root causes in the conditions that, um, where people live, work, and play. And many of these conditions create scenarios which uh, promote processes, disease processes, that are well established by the time they're recognized clinically. So we need to get to these root causes, and this is why we're emphasizing this. Uh, the other two bullets on this slide, the importance of achieving health equity and the practical considerations, reflect really striking examples of why we need to address social determinants of health. We've, we've had a goal about health equity and health disparities. And there's really extensive evidence that health disparities reflect, in large part, systematic disadvantages in the, about the conditions in which people live, so that the social determinants objective will help us to realize the health equity, health disparities objectives as well. For practical considerations, I ask you to think about the obesity epidemic. The obesity epidemic has been attributed to the changes in the way we live over the past few decades. It's a good example and it's an affecting the whole population that changes in social conditions, economic conditions, environmental conditions that affect eating and physical activity can be seen when you get on the scale. The whole population is much, much heavier than we were uh, a couple of decades ago. Next. This is one of the slides from the video. Uh, it shows the framework for reaching Healthy People 2020 goals. It shows the determinants of health, including the genetic and the individual, but also shows the uh, social, economic, and physical environmental determinants. And the narrative explains 
in really very nice plain language how these conditions affect the way people um, live, work, play, and consequently their health. Uh, it explains that these conditions affect the range of choices people have. So we know that choices are important. People make choices that affect their health. But the range of choices, how attractive they are, and um, uh, how easy they are, whether it's easier to do something that's harmful to your health, uh, so hard to do something that's good for your health that nobody is likely to do it. Next. And this is another slide from the video that explains uh, the really important action cycle that's proposed in this framework. It's a quality improvement cycle, so it's not that we try something and 10 years later we figure out that it didn't work. We take action on the base, based on the best available evidence. Uh, we assess, we monitor, we evaluate, we disseminate what works. We use the, the information from the evaluation as a feedback on planning interventions so that we can develop better uh, interventions to impact upon determinants of health. Next. And this is my last slide to sum up again this point about multi-sectoral collaboration. If we believe that health is created through the conditions of our daily lives, then everyone who has an influence on our daily lives has to be at the table. Uh, we call this a health and all policies approach, and that's what we need. We need the evidence base, or we need to build the evidence. Uh, and we need to create partnerships. And I'd like to end by saying that we have already begun. Our National Prevention Council is an excellent example of a multi-sectoral partnership. The uh, members of that council include secretaries of uh, agriculture, education, transportation, the Federal Trade Commission, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Homeland Security, and others. Those are, in a way, part of the health, public health system. And I, we offer that example to say this is what we mean by everybody, all hands on deck, everyone who affects health, helping to create health. Thank you. <laughs>